Hello, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to use the pallet schedule table on pallet changing machines and pallet pools. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be using this UMC 500 SS with the 16 station pallet pool. However, this process is the same for any machine with a pallet changing option. Now before we begin, I'm going to be using a machine with software version 100.20.000.1200 for this video. If your machine has another version, be aware that the screen and functions may look slightly different from what you see here, but the functionality will remain mostly the same. To view the pallet schedule table, press current commands and under the devices tab, toggle over to the pallet schedule table. On the screen, you will see a table and a diagram showing all the current locations of the pallets in your machine. For the table, the number of rows is equivalent to the number of pallets your machine can hold, starting at one and going up to the maximum number of pallets, in this case, 17. Next to the pallet number, each pallet will have a letter which corresponds to the shelf that it is loaded onto. This is updated each time the pallet moves. Next, we have load order. The load order column describes the order in which the pallets are loaded during lights out or unmanned machining. I will explain how you set the order later on. The pallet status can be set to one of four things, scheduled, unscheduled, missing, and complete. A pallet will remain unscheduled until the user schedules it, at which point a load order is created for that pallet. After the pallet is loaded and the program has been run, the pallet status will change to completed to let the operator know that they can retrieve the finished parts. If at any point you need to remove a pallet, you can set it to missing to let the machine and the operator know that there is not a pallet there. Pallet usage tells you how many times a program has run on that particular pallet. The part program goes under the program name tab. You must select a program to load the pallet into the machine. Once the program is loaded, the program comment in the first line of the program will display in the column on the right. Next to the machine diagram, there is a list of buttons. With the pallet number cell highlighted, pressing enter will allow you to enter in a comment for that pallet. This can be used to describe what fixture is placed on that location or simply to leave information for that operator. Alter will load the pallet and program for whatever pallet you have selected. Once the pallet is loaded, you can then press insert to run the program. F2 changes the pallet status to scheduled and makes the load order the next successive number available on the table. For example, if two is the highest number of a scheduled pallet, F2 will set that pallet to three. F3 moves the pallet in the load station to an open spot, and F4 retrieves whatever pallet you have highlighted and puts it in the load station. So that provides you an overview of what the pallet schedule table is and how the buttons work. But now let's get into an actual use case. I'm going to schedule three pallets to run unattended. I've got my first pallet in the load station with my stock loaded. Highlighting the pallet number, I'm going to press enter and let the operator know that I don't want him to remove this vise. Next, I'm going to press F2 to schedule the pallet. Since I have no other pallets scheduled, it will set my load order to one. Now I'm going to highlight the program name cell and press enter to select the pallets program. If the machine is to run unattended, it is crucial that I have an M199 at the end of my program. This will serve two functions, as an M30 to end the program and as an M50 to swap to the next scheduled pallet. Now that this pallet is all set up, I'm going to highlight pallet two and press F4 to retrieve the pallet and load it into the load station. This will move pallet one to an open spot before getting pallet two. With pallet two loaded, I can repeat this process until all three of my pallets are loaded. With all my pallets loaded, I'll select my first scheduled pallet, pallet one. I'm going to press alter and this will load the part and the program into the machine. Once it's loaded, I'm going to press insert to run the program. If cycle start is pressed instead of insert, the M199 will act like an M30 to end the program, but it will not command a pallet change. Using cycle start, we can run individual programs one part at a time, whereas insert will initiate the scheduled unmanned machining cycle. The machine will now run the program and machine the part. When the program has finished, the pallet status will change to completed, 
and since it has an M199 at the end, it will move the pallet to an open shelf and load the next scheduled pallet. Note that when the first pallet was completed, the numbers in the pallet schedule column changed. This is because the next loaded pallet will always have a number one next to it. From here, the machine will run and keep loading pallets until all my scheduled pallets are complete. Now this is most all you need to know to use the pallet schedule table, but there are a few things that I didn't cover. First is that while the machine is running, you can move pallets to and from the load station if you need to load stock or remove finished parts. Additionally, if you wish to change pallets without using the pallet schedule table, you can use the M50 M code in which you enter an M50 followed by a P and whatever number of pallet you want to load into the machine. Lastly, you can use an M46, which if a certain pallet is loaded, jumps to a specific line in your program. This is useful when running a family of parts using one program. I'm going to cover this more in depth in a future video, which if you're watching this in the future is linked right here. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.